Let's get into our next discussion now. There has been a growing outcry and anxiety in Port Harcourt, the river state capital, over increasing presence of black soot, which began in the last quarter of 2016, resulting in, in poor air quality in the state. Now, according to the state's Ministry of the Environment, there are about 30 illegal refining sites in 14 out of the 23 local governments of the state. Little wonder why, apart from the health hazards posed by the black suit, it has also polluted the environment, such as houses, cars, trees, and even clothes. Aside from illegal refineries, burning of refined petroleum products by the military, meat uh, roasting with tires, gas flaring, asphalt plants, ref refuse burning, and the activities of fertilizer companies are also set to uh, contribute to the suit. Although the government has promised to deal with anyone found culpable in the illegal refining activities and has also gone ahead to make some arrests, how far will that go in addressing the issues? That's the question on the minds of a lot of Nigerians. All right, so joining me now and on Zoom to uh, make sense of this from Port Harcourt, we have uh, Kentebe Ebiarido, a program manager, Environmental Rights Action and Friends of the Earth Nigeria. Uh, Kentebe, good morning. It's good to have you join me. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Great. And I have with me in the studio an environmentalist, John Ekoko. Good morning. Good, good morning, Mike. You. You're yeah, welcome. I'm glad to be here. Great. Now, let's start from Port Harcourt, Kentebe. Let me start with you on this. Now, there seem to be an argument regarding the, the activities of uh, illegal uh oil refiners where it is said that it is what they do that is contributing to the suit others are saying it is the destruction of of the refine the you know that process and all of that they have that is contributing to uh the suit in port Harcourt. give us a perspective to this okay thank you very much um for the past uh, five to six about well, seven years roughly the residents of port Harcourt have uh, woken up to uh, particulate matters uh, otherwise done as suit on uh, in our environment in our air so for the past six seven years people breathe in this contaminated air you wake up in the morning and you see black substances on the surface of your vehicles on the surface of your of the, of the floor people have to mop their houses on a daily basis you take your children and you see black substances coming out from their noses this are the part has been the lifestyle of the people of Potako in the past six, seven years. However, we commend the government for its for waking up to its responsibility of fighting the suit situation in this city. But we condemn in all in, in all essence the manner in which the the local government chairman and also people who are taxed with this responsibility of um, fighting um, the artisanal refiners, the manner in which they burn most of these ceased products, a manner in which they destroy most of the product that has been received. That that part, that manner is highly con condemnable. We don't approve. We don't approve of that. But we applaud the fights against it. Okay, all right. Now, John, I, I know you've been following this development in in River State too. But uh, talk to us basically. Uh, like he said, like Kentebe said, in the last seven years, there has been consistent, because we've, we've covered reports from River State on this suit, if international media have all done coverage of these stories, but they don't see, it doesn't seem to go away. We still have this issue. Now, what kind of danger are we in with this? Yeah, thank you. Um, Ken, the man from Potakot, mm. has given what I want to call an underground mm. Um, description. But in the Nigerian Environmental Society, in our 2013 annual conference, mm -hmm. we talked about the effect of artisanal refineries in Niger Delta. Mm -hmm. In other words, before it became, three years before it became a national issue, we had already envisaged that was going to happen. Now, to me, this black suit is a microcosm, a small form of the climate change we are dealing with. Hmm. Because there is a certain amount of activity that goes on, which allows the earth to continue to cleanse itself. Once you cross that threshold, right, then what happens, the whole system um, cascades, you know, uh, disrupts. 
That is what has happened. All over the world, there are certain anthropogenic activities which causes pollution, which the environment can clean up. But just like you read, in Patakot, we've had a large number of artisanal refineries. This is separate from the gas flaring going on, hmm. separate from the tire burning, hmm. separate from the asphalt, even the pipelines. There are flares from there. The meat roasting, so much activities which over time kept compounding until the whole atmosphere is taken over. So right now, just as it did not start in one day, it will not go away in one day. Climate change did not start in one day. Hmm. We've been shouting it since. Oh, keep it at 1.5%. Is it not so? Mm -hmm. Above mm. pre-industrial level. Has it gotten there? But we have to keep working at it. We have to keep working at it. Like he said, um, yes, they commend the government for taking action. But the question is, are there no better alternatives? You want to see uh, reduce uh, pollution, air pollution, and you are burning. How does that reduce air pollution? I think there are better ways. Okay. I think there are better ways. All right. Now, Ken, um, talk to us uh, the, this, the impact or the effect of this suit on the people. Uh, what are you seeing? Are, are there special reports from the hospitals that people are falling ill and uh, this suit is impacting people in a certain way? Uh, talk to us basically from that window. Okay. Thank you. Um, from... Um information reaching us and also from visits and little bits of reports that have been done that has been done over the years it, there is an increase in um, a particular section of of uh, the university of portacot where people with um, have difficulty breathing you know at that particular segment of the hospital and also the bridge memorial hospital those part those departments have been filled with more and more people However, the children in the city of Portacourt have always have all had issues around um, difficulty trying to breathe. So, apart from the fact that you know people breathe this, it's also the, the major the major part uh, the fact that in the next less than maybe 15 years from now, we are going to have a lot of people you know coming down with cancer, and you begin to ask questions: So, how did this thing come about? Not know, not knowing that. Most of the things that have been taken in, most of like the black suit, is the major cause of the cancer. So cancer is a major health risk that the people in the Niger Delta, not just for that, but face at this moment as we speak. And it's not palatable at all. Hmm. All right, uh, John, the, uh, we, we heard of uh, SARS in China and in parts of Asia where people moved around with in fact it became a, a government directive or instruction where everyone or policy where everyone had to move around with a uh, nose mask in river state we we may not have been seeing that will that uh, help in a little way it will is that what we should it expect? will definitely help um i think the problem is a governance problem hmm. because we allow things to escalate to a point of crisis before accepting that it is a challenge. Like I said, since 2013, in the Nigerian Environmental Society, we have seen that risk. We have held seminars, we have written papers, we have engaged government, but until the blacks were covered everywhere, the hazardous black suit, you know? And thank God that even the governor has even started doing something. But is he going about it the right way? The first thing is, please let us watch out for the health of our citizens, our residents. Take measures. You can measure the size of this black suit. Some are as big as 10 microns. Do you get the point? And when it enters into the human system, my brother there talked of cancer. What about heart problems? Mm. What about thoracic problems? What about lung problems?
In fact, the greatest casualty is lung problem. Yeah, because it's... It lodges in the lungs and affects directly. breathing. Yeah. So, to take care of that, you need a mask. It is what you want to call a matching order for Potakot Asad now and his environs. You have to do that. Then number two, other actions you can take. Tree is too affected, but they still help to clean the dust mm. from the air. In other words, they have to embark on massive afforestation. Gardening, you know, and all types of plant life to help clean the air. Number three is that these artisanal refineries, in going about eliminating them, they should, as much as possible, avoid burning the products on the site because it's compounding the problem. What you talk about is actually, um, uh, what, do you, what do you call it now? Um, the words are escaping me, but it's just like you want to uh, dilute it. Hmm. Do you get the point? Okay. Yes, and I think, and is it, because gas flaring too, it's still going on there. The long and short of it all is that to a designing mind, the action is so obvious you need to reduce the intensity of burning of fossil fuels in whatever form below what is accepted, far, far below, because you have crossed the threshold. Mm, crossed the line. Yes. Okay. Uh, Kentebe, the, the, l let me ask you this so we can have it as a point of information. I is there any uh, direct policy or move by government to compel people to wear masks as a way of uh, just the first uh, prevention against uh, this suit inhalation? Well, as for now, the River State government has not made any particular statement as regarding uh, making masks wearing compulsory as a preventive measure for um, uh, the suit situation. But um, if you also look at the, the particulate matter that emanates from this uh, artisanal refining, the max is not sufficient. What is sufficient is total annihilation of the entire process. If wearing the max does not stop the suit from passing through the max into your nostrils, it's just like a preventive measure, but it's not sufficient enough. That's why we don't even, I don't even advocate for people saying, oh, we must wear max. Of course, max is going to help. But let us go to the, the root of the problem. Why not just cut off the roots rather than water the tree so that it doesn't um, grow so big? Why do we have to wear masks when we could stop the artisanal refiners from working? It is called crude theft. It is called thieves. They are thieves. They are not, there's no other way to go about it. And these thieves are stealing the economy of the country. They are stealing the economy of the state. They are also killing people in their drums. And what these thieves don't also understand is the fact that no matter the amount of money they make, from this business, they will end up spending all in trying to trick themselves because they are the first people who are on the front line of having this uh, issue. So it's not about the match, it's about the fact that the government must stop it, must be a holistic fight. It must come from the federal, a joint across, joint with the state to ensure that this thing ends. And like my brother in the studio has rightly mentioned, we must reduce the heating up of the, of the, of the atmosphere, we must reduce the gas flame. We must reduce it. Nigeria needs to stop being dependent on fossil fuels and start thinking about alternative sources of energy so that we all, this situation of um, suits will not occur. This is River State. It's also occurring in Akbaibam State and it's also there in, in Bayasa State. Let's not forget other regions of the, of the country are also envisaging to have to be called oil producing regions. What happens when all of this starts? Mm. All right, uh, is it good to note uh, we have to leave the, the, the oil in the soil like it, like one of the slogans will say sometimes. But uh, let, exactly. staying with you, staying with you, uh, what are civil society organizations like you, the Environmental Rights Action, and, and several others who care about the environment, uh, who have been nurturing the environment for so many years and decades now? What are you doing about this? Well, first and foremost, we have made a proposal to the Nigerian government over a decade ago, asking that uh, they should leave the oil in the soil and uh, try to see how um, we create a moratorium where we get compensation for 
money for the oil that has been left in the soil. However, that has been a huge brick wall because the government of the country is not really thinking about that part. We also have the challenges from the, civil, from the multinational companies who feel that they must extract all they can from the Nigerian environment before they can actually leave. But be that as it may, we still stand the firm to believe that leaving the oil in the soil is the way forward for Nigeria. The more we do that, the better for our environment. That talks about no fossil fuel extraction. That talks about no suit in the environment. That keeps our health, the environment healthy. Our farms will be viable again. We can now feed ourselves properly. Our rivers will be also healthy. And let's not forget, when people talk about um, extraction of crude oil and oil spills and gas flow, let us not forget that even in the local residences within the city of Potakot or close to where oil extraction has taken place, if you drill your borehole, you still have opportunity in of the active potentials of meeting polluted water. So it's not about the fact that uh, the oil has spilled into the rivers. So it's about also the groundwater has also been affected. Hmm. That is why if you look at what is going on in Ogoni, they are also working on the water in Ogoni because the old water, the groundwater is polluted. So these are campaigns that we've taken over a period of time and we are still, we still stand firm on the fact that the Nigerian government must must change this source of uh, energy. They must reduce their dependence on uh, fossil fuels and re and change over to renewable energy because renewable is actually the way forward. Mm. Yeah, renewable is safer and uh, is even cheaper in the long yeah, run. You it's know, cheaper. and is more yeah. environment uh, environmentally friendly. friendly. All right, now, John, the what can individuals, residents of Port Harcourt do right now when it comes to w the suit is already here? So, but right now, what can they do at their own little levels to uh, you know stay safe? Well, the first thing they can do is to identify all the black spots hmm. where pollution of the air continues and like they are doing now continue to report to the authorities so that even if nobody moves there the fact that those places have been discovered activities would either cease completely or really de-escalate to the absolute minimum that is number one number two is that though my brother doesn't agree let them wear a mask. It is still better than breathing in 100% mm -hmm. of the suit. Of the suit. Then, also, I know there have been a few civil actions, I mean, civil society activities. Let them continue until it builds up to a critical mass because the people have been nonchalant mostly. It's as if it's another person that will die if I breathe in black suits. Mm -hmm. They forget that they are the ones that will die. Let them speak up. Lagos will say Soros, okay. Mm. You get the point? Yeah. We in the environmental society, we have tried to engage the state government, the local governments, pointing out specific areas where pollution is going on. Now, so far, the progress has been slow. But there has been some progress. You cannot tell what finally made the governor to really wake up and start to go around all the places. Mm. It will have been communal reports from various sources. I cannot say it's environmental society alone. Another thing is when people are indoors, they should try to close all windows. It's so bad there that if you open your window, mm. before you turn your eyes, everywhere is black. Exactly. I hear people don't wear white clothes anymore. You can't wear white. It's not possible. You cannot also, because we're talking about the environment, mm. rule out the uh, issue of reforestation, planting of trees, planting of gardens. Like I've always said, these are the lungs of the earth. They have a way of sucking, you know, these uh, dust particles. Mm. If we do that, and a vital role is education. Mm. An enlightenment. Yes. Mm. A vital role is education and enlightenment. The people must be made to know, number one, the health hazard. Sadly, these are uh, uh, hazards are built up gradually. They don't give any notice until when they've totally overwhelmed the person. You, you talk of cancer, you talk of lung.
The search about lung is when it's even 99%, you may not know. Hmm. It's when it becomes 100%. That was why SARS, I mean, yes, uh, this uh, COVID was so risky. By the time you know, you're already hmm. on the plane to heaven, hmm. you know? So give and take. These are some of the little, little activities that, that can be undertaken to actually minimize, but we cannot rule out the need for people to picket whoever is still flaring gas. Let them come together as communities, as concerned residents in an area, you know, as uh, concerned communities, and take action. All right. Yes. All right. Now, uh, le let me ask you, the, the, the Kentabay, I'm coming to you now for your last question. Now, the governor had given a marching order instructing all local governments to uh, be vigilant and fish out all of the illegal refineries within their domains. I wonder how effective this has been so far. Well, like I mentioned earlier, the, we commend the governor for that bold step, we, although it may be coming a little bit late, but um, it's a step in the right direction. A lot of people criticize the fact that, oh, is the, the local government chairman and then the ones in charge of, you know, the environment, but I, I looked at it differently. This is a matching order from the governor. And um, the, if the governor has made such a pronouncement, it means that uh, they must wake up to the responsibility and act. And um, to the best of my knowledge, and um, which I would say congratulations uh, indeed to the River State go uh, Governor, the suit has reduced. I mean, people wake up in the morning and you can wipe the surface of your car and see dust rather than black substances. I'm not saying it has stopped, completely stopped, but it has reduced. As I this morning, I checked my car. I saw that the, the few rugrats living around my area still did some cooking over the night, which means that they are still coming for them, which means there's still some, um, they are still hiding to do this business. The move of the local government chairman to identify all the spots within that locality and also destroy them has really improved the uh, the fight against um, artisanal refining. However, some local governments are still suspects. Suspects in the sense that I don't know whether they don't want to offend the warlords. I don't know who the business owners are, but some of them have said that they have not seen any artisanal refining going on in their domain, which we found very laughable. And I don't think that is right. They should think about the health of the people with, um, before they think about the profits going into whoever godfather whoever is uh, called upon to uh, that owns the place okay what is paramount is the protection of lives and property of the people mm -hmm. and that is what the governor has asked them to do and that is also what he is doing okay all right thank you so much kente bay biarido of the environmental rights action friends of the earth thank you for talking to us on tvc breakfast Thank you for having Great. me. Great. And uh, John Okoko, thank you for coming on the program as well. Mike, it's a big pleasure. Thank you very much. Thank yeah. You.